Today is the 15th of July, 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. If you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So having explained how it all works, let's start today's leg of Walking the Way with our opening prayer. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, from whom every good gift derives, we gather to worship you today. You are an awesome God, greater than our comprehension or our imagination, and you are beyond any word we could ever use to describe you. And yet, through Jesus, we know the intimacy of your vast love. We come to you in thanksgiving and praise, to know that you are God and to place our lives anew into your perspective. Enlarge our vision, Lord. Instill in us again your hope in our place, your peace where our hatred threatens, your joy amidst our depression, your love overwhelming our apathy. Father, may your Holy Spirit surround and indwell us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we read about David taking Bathsheba. And Paul writes to Timothy about Scripture. But we'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us this morning through the Scriptures. Father, inspire us to read your Scriptures and to meditate upon them day and night. Give us a real understanding of what we read that we might actually put its principles into practice. Father, I know that understanding and good intentions are worthless unless they're enrooted in your graceful love. So I ask today, Lord, that the words that we hear aren't just signs, they're not just sounds but they're channels of grace into our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. 
Our Bible readings this week are taken from God's Word translation, and we begin with 2 Samuel 11 and 12. In the spring, the time when kings go to battle, David sent Joab, his mercenaries, and Israel's army to war. They destroyed the Ammonites and attacked Rabbah, while David stayed in Jerusalem. Now when evening came, David got up from his bed and walked around the roof of the royal palace, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and she was very pretty. David sent someone to ask about the woman. The man said, She's Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam and wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers and took her. She came to him, and he went to bed with her. She just cleansed herself after a monthly period. Then she went home. The woman had become pregnant, so she sent someone to tell David that she was pregnant. Then David sent a messenger to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. So Job sent Uriah to David. When Uriah arrived, David asked him how Job and the troops were and how the war was going. Go home, David said to Uriah, and wash your feet. Uriah left the palace, and the king sent a present to him. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the royal palace among his superior's mercenaries. He didn't go home. When they told David Uriah didn't go home, David asked Uriah, Didn't you just come from a journey? Why didn't you go home? Uriah answered David, The ark and the army of Israel and Judah are in temporary shelters, and my commander Joab and your majesty's mercenaries are living in the fields. Should I then go to my house to eat and drink and go to bed with my wife? I solemnly swear, as sure as you are living, I won't do this. David said to Uriah, Then stay today, and tomorrow I'll send you back. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem that day and the next. David summoned him, ate and drank with him, and got him drunk. But that night Uriah went to lie down in his bed among his superior's mercenaries. He didn't go home. In the morning David wrote a letter to Job and sent it with Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Put Uriah on the front line where the fighting is the heaviest. Then abandon him so that he will be struck down and die. Since Joab had kept the city under observation, he put Uriah at the place where he knew the experienced warriors were. The men of the city came out and fought Joab. Some of the people, namely David, some of David's mercenaries, fell and died, including Uriah the Hittite. Then Joab sent a messenger to report to David all the details of the battle. And he commanded the messenger, When you finish telling the king about the battle, the king may become angry. He may ask you, why did you go so close to the city to fight? Didn't you know they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Jerubasheth's son Abimelech? Didn't a woman on the wall at Thebes throw a small millstone at him and kill him? Why did you go so close to the wall? If the king asks us and say, Your man Uriah the Hittite is also dead. The messenger left, and when he arrived, he reported to David everything Job told him to say. The messenger said, Their men overpowered us, and came to attack us in the field. Then we forced them back to the entrance of the city gate. The archers on the wall shot down at your mercenaries, and some of your majesty's mercenaries died. Your man Uriah the Hittite also is dead. David said to the messenger, This is what you are to say to Job. Don't let this thing trouble you, because a sword can kill one person as easily as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage him. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband Uriah was dead, she mourned for him. When her mourning was over, David sent for her and brought her into his house, and she became his wife. Then she gave birth to a son, but the Lord considered David's actions evil. So the Lord sent Nathan to David. Nathan came to him and said, There were two men in a certain city. One was rich, and the other was poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cows, but the poor man only had one little female lamb that he had bought. He raised her, and she grew up in his home with his children. She would eat his food and drink from his cup. She rested in his arms and was like a daughter. Now a visitor came to the rich man. The rich man thought it would be a pity to take one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveller. So he took the poor man's lamb, and prepared her for the traveller. David burned with anger against the man. I solemnly swear, as the Lord lives, he said to Nathan, 
The man who did this certainly deserves to die, and he must pay back four times the price of the lamb because he did this and had no pity. You are the man, Nathan told David. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel and rescued you from Saul. I gave you your master Saul's house and his wives. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if this weren't enough, I would have given you even more. Why do you despise my word by doing what I considered evil? You had Uriah the Hittite killed in battle. You took his wife as your wife. You used the Ammonites to kill him. So warfare will never leave your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. This is what the Lord says. I will stir up trouble against you within your own household and before your own eyes. I will take your wives and give them to someone close to you. He will go to bed with your wives in broad daylight. You did this secretly, but I will make this happen in broad daylight in front of all Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You will not die. But since you have shown total contempt for the Lord by this affair, the son that is born to you must die. Then Nathan went home. The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had given birth to for David, so the child became sick. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and lay on the ground all night. The older leaders in his palace stood beside him to raise him up from the ground, but he was unwilling, and he wouldn't eat with them. On the seventh day the child died, but David's officials were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. They thought, while the child was alive, we talked to him, and he wouldn't listen to us. How can we tell him the child is dead? He may harm himself. When David saw that his officials were whispering to one another, he realized that the child was dead. Is the child dead? David asked them. Yes, he is dead, they answered. So David got up off the ground, bathed, anointed himself and changed his clothes. He went into the Lord's house and worshipped. Then he went home and asked for food. They placed food in front of him and he ate. His officials asked him, Why are you acting this way? You fasted and cried over the child while he was alive. But as soon as the child died, you got up and ate? David answered, As long as the child was alive, I fasted and cried. I thought, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast now that he's dead? Can I bring him back? Someday I'll go to him. But he won't come back to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba. He went to bed with her, and she later gave birth to a son. David named him Solomon. The Lord loved the child, and sent a message through the prophet Nathan to name the baby Jedidiah, the Lord's beloved. Meanwhile, Job fought against the Ammonite city of Rabbah, and captured its royal fortress. So he sent messengers to tell David, I fought against Rabbah and captured the fortress guarding its water supply. Gather the rest of the troops, surround the city and capture it. Otherwise, I will capture the city and it will be named after me. So David gathered all the troops and went to Rabbah. He fought against the city and captured it. He took the gold crown from the head of Rabbah's king and put it on his own head. The crown weighed 75 pounds and it contained a precious stone. David also took a lot of goods from the city. He brought out the troops who were there and put them to work with saws, hoes, and axes. He did the same to all the Ammonite cities. Then David and all the troops returned to Jerusalem. 1 Chronicles 20 In the spring, the time when the kings go out to battle, Job led the army to war. They destroyed the Ammonites and came to Rabbah to attack it while David stayed in Jerusalem. Joab defeated Rabbah and tore it down. He took the gold crown from the head of Rabbah's king and put it on David's head. The crown was found to weigh 75 pounds, and in it was a precious stone. David also took a lot of goods from the city. He brought out the troops who were there, and put them to work with saws, hoes, and axes. He did the same to all the Ammonite cities. Then David and all the troops returned to Jerusalem. After this, War broke out with the Philistines at Giza. But Sibachai from Husha killed Sippai, 
a descendant of Harapha, and the Philistines were defeated. When more fighting broke out with the Philistines, Elanan, son of Jair, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath from Gath. The shaft of Lami's fear was like a beam used by weavers. In another battle at Gath, there was a tall man who had twenty-four fingers and toes, six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. He was also a descendant of Harapha. When he challenged Israel, Jonathan, son of David's brother Shemir, killed him. These men were the descendants of Harapha from Gath, and David and his men killed them. 2 Timothy 3 You must understand this. In the last days there will be violent periods of time. People will be selfish and love money. They will brag, be arrogant, and use abusive language. They will curse their parents, show no gratitude, have no respect for what is holy, and lack normal affection for their families. They will refuse to make peace with anyone. They will be slanderous, lack self-control, be brutal, and have no love for what is good. They will be traitors. They will be reckless and conceited. They will love pleasure rather than God. They will appear to have a godly life, but they will not let its power change them. Stay away from such people. Some of these men go into homes and mislead weak-minded women who are burdened with sin and led by all kinds of desires. These women are always studying, but are never able to recognize the truth. As Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men oppose the truth. Their minds are corrupt, and the faith they teach is counterfeit. Certainly, they won't get very far. Like the stupidity of Janus and Jambres, their stupidity will plain to everyone. But you know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love and my endurance. You also know about the kind of persecutions and suffering which happened to me in the cities of Antioch, Iconium and Lystra. I endured these persecutions and the Lord rescued me from all of them. Those who try to live a godly life because they believe in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But evil people, and phony preachers will go on from bad to worse as they mislead people and they themselves are misled. However, continue in what you have learned and found to be true. You know who your teachers were. From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. They have the power to give you wisdom so that you can be saved through faith in Christ Jesus. Every Scripture passage is inspired by God. All of them are useful for teaching, pointing out errors, correcting people and training them for a life that has God's approval. They equip God's servants so that they are completely prepared to do good things. Proverbs 30 The words of Agar, son of Jekka, Agar's prophetic revelation. To God, this man's declaration, I am weary, O God. I am weary and worn out, O God. I am more like a dumb animal than a human being. I don't even have human understanding. I haven't learnt wisdom. I don't have knowledge of the Holy One. To the audience. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in the palm of his hand? Who has wrapped water in a garment? Who has set up the earth from one end to the other? What is his name? or the name of his son, surely you must know. All of God's words are proven to be true. He is a shield to those who come to him for protection. Do not add to his words, or he will reprimand you, and you will be found to be a liar. To God, I have asked you for two things. Don't keep them from me before I die. Keep vanity and lies far away from me. Don't give me either poverty or riches. Feed me only the food I need, or I may feel satisfied and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal, and give the name of my God a bad reputation. To the audience. Do not slander a slave to his master. The slave will curse you and you will be found guilty. A certain kind of person curses his father and does not bless his mother. A certain kind of person thinks he is pure, but is not washed from his own feces. A certain kind of person looks around arrogantly and is conceited. 
a certain kind of person whose teeth are like swords and whose jaws are like knives to devour oppressed people from the earth and people from among humanity. The blood-sucking leech has two daughters, give and give. Four things that are never satisfied. Three things that are never satisfied. Four never say enough. The grave, a barren womb, a land that never gets enough water, a fire that does not say enough. The eye that makes fun of a father and hates to obey a mother will be plucked out by ravens in the valley and eaten by young vultures. Three things are too amazing to me, even four that I cannot understand. An eagle making its way through the sky, a snake making its way over a rock, a ship making its way through high seas, a man making his way with a virgin. This is the way of a woman who commits adultery. She eats, wipes her mouth and says, I haven't done anything wrong. Three things that cause the earth to tremble, even Ford cannot bear under. A slave when he becomes a king, a godless fool when he is filled with food, a woman who is unloved when she gets married, a maid when she replaces her mistress. Four things left on earth are small, yet they are very wise. Ants are not strong species, but they store their food in summer. Rock badgers are not a mighty species, yet they make their home in the rocks. Locusts have no king, yet all of them divide into swarms by instinct. A lizard you can hold in your hands yet it can even be found in royal palaces. There are three things that walk with dignity, even four that march with dignity. A lion, mightiest among animals which turns away from nothing. A strutting rooster. A male goat. A king at the head of his army. If you are such a goodless fool as to honor yourself, or if you scheme, you had better put your hand over your mouth. As churning milk produces butter, and punching a nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces a fight. We're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention, and after the music we'll say our prayers for the day, and the time of the year. Favorite songs 
Just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or email. And check out the show notes for all the contact details. There are links there. So I'd appreciate it if you could. Um, if you need prayer, if you'd let us know, we can pray for you. And I've, I've got my own prayer request today, if you don't mind. Um, my brother was taken to hospital this morning with a detached retina. He's in the security game. Um, and if he loses sight in that eye, it'll probably affect his career prospects. So if we can rem- if we can remember in our prayers and pray that the surgery goes well. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, grant that we may find the power of your Spirit so that we may live on a higher level, no longer controlled by our lower natures, but strengthened to take up the battle of life. May we be children of the Spirit, and may we walk in the Spirit. Guard us against carelessness and keep us joyful and courageous. Help us and counsel us in all our ways, so that we may honor you and testify that you are our God, our true help. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. Lord, I come, I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Holy God, you see into our hearts. You see the true selves we tried to hide from others. The sins we fear would destroy our images, the evils that lurk so deep within us that we can scarcely name them, the unholy habits that have been with us so long that they no longer prick our consciences. But you also see in us Jesus Christ, the Holy One who took our sin and covers us in his righteousness. And so today, Lord, forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. So I teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way. 
When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope, and stay. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the prayers and all the music. And if you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information about me or the podcast, head to rayborrett.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also listen to us on TuneIn, YouTube, and if you're in the States, and I think possibly Australia, radio.com. My name is Ray, and so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.